The White House is pausing approval on projects to export liquefied natural gas in order to conduct a climate review. And joining us now to talk about this is climate activist Roshetta Ozain. Uh, she's the director and founder of the Vessel Project of Louisiana Grassroots Environmental Justice Group. Uh, Roy Shetta, thank you so much for talking to us. We really appreciate it. Um, uh, you also live in Sulphur, Louisiana, uh, a town near uh, several major liquefied natural gas terminals. And we're showing some of the video of what it looks like to live near one. And we're just trying to put this in perspective so folks understand why the administration might have done this sort of thing. You've had to deal with this firsthand. What's it like? Thank you so much for having me, Mr. Acosta. Um, yes, I am a mom of six living here in Sulphur, Louisiana. You can imagine living in a town with the name Sulphur, what yep. it's like just from the name of the town. So we are, you know, surrounded by more than a dozen petrochemical and plastic polluting gas and oil facilities and three LNG facilities. Our mm. air smells like rotten eggs. There's constant flaring, as you can see in the video. Sounds like trains are coming back and forth. I have two children who suffer with asthma. I have children who suffer with other respiratory and skin conditions, and all have been linked to ex long term industrial exposure. Now, mm. me and my family is not alone in this. There are several families who are dealing with the same thing, and we decided to get together and stand up for our children, for their right to breathe clean air and drink clean water. And Rochetta, we're looking at some of the video you sent us now, and you can see this orange glow off in the distance. It looks very menacing. What are we looking at? What you're seeing is what they call a flare, F-L-A-R-E. Mm. That is an intentional release of uh, extra product from the facilities in an attempt for there not to be an explosion. You're seeing this view from my front door, my wow. uh, 20-year-old daughter, in this video. That's how close we are to these facilities. Now, you may ask the same question as me. If there's a chance of an explosion, why are these facilities so close to neighborhoods? But that's, that's where they are, and they want to build more than 20 more of these facilities along the Gulf Coast. Wow, and it's unbelievable that you can see houses right right by this and, and that the video was taken from your front doorstep is just unbelievable. And so what was your reaction when you heard about the administration uh, issuing this decision that they were going to delay these exports? The Biden administration made a monumental decision in the fight for climate justice by announcing they are going to pause reviewing applications for new liquefied natural gas export facilities. We yeah. know in my community that there is nothing natural about LNG. In fact, it should be called LMG for liquefied methane gas due to the amount of methane pollution that they release every day. These facilities have proven to be more harmful than coal because of the way that they have to be shipped. Now, my community is a community where there's fracking, extracting, and exporting. And when these uh, gases are exported and they're shipped across the water, they're more dangerous than coal. Why are they located in and near communities and schools? I have, you know, several videos even from dropping my son who has epilepsy, dropping him off at school, and you can see the flare right across the street from the school's door. So, you know, it's, enough is enough. There, we can no longer put men and women in danger all for money. It's time out for putting policy before people and funds before family. We got to put people first. And this administration made a bold move drew their line in the sand and stood up to dirty oil and gas. And we say bravo to this administration. We know that they've listened to us. We yeah. marched, we've signed petitions, we've, you know, threatened sit-ins, and they heard our voices. And, and Roy, should I, I mean, for the folks at home who might say, oh, well, why don't they just move uh, so they don't live near one of these places? What, what, what do you say to that? Well, this is our home. You know, it's carnival season right now, Mardi Gras season, and people from all over the world come to Louisiana for our carnivals, for our food, for our Gulf 
uh, seafood, the shrimp and oysters and fish. We live here. We get to enjoy those things every day. This is where my children was born and raised. We have no plans of leaving. We feel like there is a brighter future and there is a way to, you know, bring in sustainable uh, resources to our community. We're not talking about stopping everything today. We know that there's going to take a transition, right? All we're asking for is that community members be a part of yeah. the decisions for our community and that these decisions don't kill our children. All right. Well, Rochetta Ozane, uh, you're very passionate about this, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thanks to your kids for getting that video as well. Always helps uh, make it very relatable to folks so they understand what you're going through. Uh, Roy Shetta, thanks very much for your time. Thank you so much. All right. Good to talk.